If you're somebody who starts the week with the best of intentions, but by Thursday, you have absolutely no idea where the time went, then this video is for you. That was something that I struggled with for the longest time. And it's only this year that I've gotten into a rhythm of actually planning every single week. And not only has it completely improved the way I operate my business and my life and my social schedule, but it also just makes me feel so much more in control of my time and energy and gives me peace. <laughs> I use Notion for my planning and productivity, but the process I use is really agnostic across any platform or paper planner that you want to use. So I'm going to take you into my Notion software now, but just pay attention to the flow of how I do things and take what works for you and leave the rest. So on that note, I will see you on the other side. So my process is part planning, part reflection, and because I'm ending up this week right here, this is a week where I'm reflecting. So I'm putting in numbers that are just tracking growth and what I liked and didn't like doing in the week. And then I've got more measurables in here that there's just a bunch of stuff that I track in a database so that I can see week to week, you know, how much am I spending? How much am I growing? Those sort of things, both from a business context and also from a personal context. Then, when I'm actually in my week, that's sort of my reflection piece actually. And this is my planning and execution. So this is my to-do list. And I pull these to-dos from my task list within Notion and all of the other places where I have a tendency to collect different tasks. <laughs> if you're anything like me, you've got like pieces of paper all over the place and you're using three different to-do systems online. And you know, that is a big struggle for me. So I try to keep everything in Notion as much as possible, but it just so happens that I have to write things down the minute they come to me and I may or may not be in front of my computer. So I take all the tasks from wherever I have them and I start compiling them in here. I don't like just running from my task list in Notion and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. I like this visual layout because it just shows me my entire week in one full swoop. And then whatever, you know, doesn't get done one day, I can, you just pull and drag these things to the next day, which makes it super easy. And then whatever doesn't get done, you're just going to pull to outstanding tasks and that will be another source of tasks that you will pull from when planning the next week. So I just, I love the way this looks. I love the way it feels and it's just, it works for me. Now, this is my habit tracker and I love it. I have it set up so that I only see the day that I'm on, right? So every day I click new and because I have this up all week, because it is my to-do list and it sits on one of my screens all day, I am able to then have this up as well. And I, I always remember to track these things. So yes, I meditated this morning. Yes, I planned the day, even though it was Saturday. Yes, I journaled. Yes, I worked out twice, I might add. And yes, I got 10,000 steps. So I do that every day because those are my well being metrics that are very, very important. Then I have my content cal calendar and this is, there's nothing on it right now. There is something on it, but I, all my filters are making it look like there's nothing in here. But this is also part of my weekly execution. A big part of my job is planning content, writing content, scripting it, recording it, all of those things. So all of those documents are in here. And I'm not going to go through the process of defiltering what I have in there, but that gives you an idea of how I execute my, my week. Everything just starts from this one page. At the end of the week, I go into my reflection area. I usually do this like on Friday afternoons after my work day, or maybe on Sunday afternoons. I record my wins for the week. I record intuitive hits. Now I used to record disappointments, but <laughs> I could see no value in that. So instead I turned it to an intu intuitive hits. And basically this is a little database where I practice. So I'm trying to build my intuitive muscle. We all have one, but it takes some time. So whenever I have intuitive hits or when I ask my, my intuition something, I track it. I track, you know, what my intuition tells me, you know, generally the timeline and what to expect. And I like to see how the, you know, everything kind of rolls out. It's kind of interesting. So that's what I do 
for part of my reflection. And then these are my to-dos. So at this point, my brain is in reflection mode and I like having my to-do list down here. I also showed it to you up at the top of this list. These are all of my tasks that I, I have to look at. And as I'm in my reflection period, I like having access to this so I can jot down to-dos because like I said, my, my lists have to be with me everywhere. And then here's just some fun things that you know, I will reflect on and then my journaling and stuff. That's basically it. So that was last week. So now I will show you how to set up a new week. I already have, but I wanted to show you how this works from scratch. So this is also where I do my quarterly planning, monthly planning, and all of those great things. They all kind of happen from the same database, but what I do is I have different templates for tracking each one. So I'm gonna click on the weekly template because that's what we're planning this week and it populates all of that template that I just showed you before. I don't do a lot of stuff at the top of the week, but I will show you what I do. First of all, I set up the week. You just click on the date, the day of the first day of whatever this week is. So this is gonna be the 15th. I start my weeks on a Monday and then it automatically populates the week. And then I also just add that up here. August 15 to 21, and that's the title of my week. I don't usually put the year in. And then I choose one thing for the week, one thing that is gonna be my absolute priority. And this week, it is definitely promoting my program. So I will put that in there, promote program. And then I scroll all the way down. Usually I have all these properties hidden. And then I come into here. So again, I like having my priority right in front of me. Promote my program. And now I will set up all of my to-dos for the week ahead. But there are a few things that I do before then. First of all, I review my goals because I have to see them in order to visually connect with them as I'm planning my week. So I can say to myself, well, if this is this goal, how am I planning my week to support that goal? Because very often I find that like my executive function doesn't connect those dots for me. So I need the visual template or structure to help me think through that process. I also, and this is my own little notion program that I created myself. I have my values, my strengths, my needs, and my vision for my own life all listed in here. And there's all based on personal assessments. And I offer this template below. It does have a small fee to it, but it is really great for getting clear on who you are so that when you're planning things, when you're making decisions and when you're making choices, you're making them in alignment with who you are, what your values are, what your needs are as an individual. It's really important to have that connection, I feel anyways. And there's a whole bunch behind this that I won't get into in today's video. So I do a self-reflection just to remind myself of what my needs and values and strengths are so that coming into this week, when I'm planning my week, I'm connected to who I am and I'm connected to what's most important to me. Then I gather up all my tasks from all the little sticky notes and loose pieces of paper and my rocket book and all of the things <laughs> where I keep my thoughts and also my master database, my task list, which I showed you down below at the bottom of the, the template as well. And I start pulling from this. It's just like, for example, update creating support. That's a module within a program I'm working on. And if I knew I was gonna do that on Monday, I would just recreate up, update, you know, support, let's say. That would be one of my things for Monday because on Mondays, I always do content creation. My days have themes to them, which gives them more structure. So I'm not like waking up on a Monday going, oh, what am I doing today? And I really like that I can go I can go into my week knowing which days I am accomplishing certain things. So on my Sunday, I'm gonna set up this week. Now I'm also going to use my calendar and I'm gonna block off time. So I might have my notion page on one screen and then I have it like three screens in front of me. Over here I've got my Google Calendar, and as I'm building out my Monday to Friday workday, sometimes Saturday and Sunday, I'm blocking off that time on my calendar. And the reason I do that is because it shows on my 
shared calendar as busy. And my shared calendar is what I share with my clients. So when they want to book calls with me, they'll see what my availability is. I only coach on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So I try not to block off too much time on those days because I like to leave it open for my clients. But by blocking out my Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, I can go back to my Google Calendar at any time and know what the chunk of time is that I'm going to be working on all of these individual tasks. And believe it or not, this is a lot of fun for me. I'm I'm, I'm a nerd. (laughs) I am a big nerd. So I love doing this and I love even more than planning my week. I love checking off these little boxes right here. Every time I do it, I get a little dopamine squirt and it feels the best. So that is how I plan my week. And these are my YouTube videos and my podcasts. And I have another website that I write for. So all of my stuff is in here. So when I know, oh, I've got this particular video coming up, I can just click on it and I can then go into this page and work from there. And it just, you know, makes everything very streamlined. And of course, I also also like to personalize each week. Like sometimes I'll always put an icon in and the icon kind of reflects how I'm feeling. I don't even know what that is, but I'm gonna leave it there. And then I usually put a header in as well, just to, you know, make it fun. And sometimes it's a picture that I've taken at some point in that week or just something I'm pulling up or one of my dog's faces, cause that always makes me happy. And I find that if I can keep this aesthetically pleasing, I have no problems coming back to it to refer to it. And I will say that is the hardest part about planning and reflecting is coming back to your page or, or tool over and over and over again, because that constant habit of coming back and checking what you have to do next is going to keep you on task. But if you're using a system that doesn't really work for you or that you don't enjoy looking at, it can make it a very cumbersome experience and eventually you will stop looking at it And then your executive function is checked out and you're scrolling Instagram and you're wasting time doing this, that, and the other thing, and you just don't know which way is up. So I find that if I make this fun, if I make it cute, if I make it enjoyable to look at, because I am a very visual person, it makes sense. And that is my weekly planning process in a nutshell. So it has evolved since the beginning of the year, but the key thing is that I do it every single week. And if for some reason I don't get it done at the top of the week, I feel it. By Tuesday, I just feel completely discombobulated. So if you find that you're not getting everything done that you want to get done, then starting this ritual of actually planning your week in advance and then doing a review at the end of the week is so incredibly powerful. And it's really gonna help you understand where your time is being spent and whether or not you need to make some changes to prioritize what's most important for you. So I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know to make more just the same. And thank you always for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care guys.